the opportunity to get on the ice with you know Brown and Levo. What's it like as as that line uh, gets some chemistry in terms of 200 feet of ice, and we'll see where you go from here. Well, it's nice. It's nice to finally just you know get on the ice, start communicating, and, and seeing uh, what their tendencies are. And you know, I feel like those guys have uh, you know have been around this organization to to expect a certain level from themselves. So um, it's just nice to get back in there in the, in the rhythm. Talk on the outside and ask about your team's blue line and people thought there should have been improvements. What, what's your sort of view of them and your confidence heading into the season with a lot of young guys fighting for, you know, five, six, seven? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you can always, you know, upgrade in, in every position. I mean, that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, but, you know, I do feel like we, we have depth, especially, you know, with the young players and the and the deep playoff run that the, the Marlies made last year. And, you know, obviously winning the Calder Cup, that's an experience that, you know, you can't uh, simulate anywhere else. So I do feel like we have some of those guys that, you know, might be ready to, you know, prepare to push for a spot. I don't, I don't know about, you know, crack the roster, but at least, you know, push other guys in, in an upwards direction. So, you know, we have, we have players that can fill those spots. I think that won the last three Stanley Cups were, were very deep down the middle. I think Washington had 73 points from its centers in the playoffs. Are you guys now in that position where you can look at your three and say, it's as good as what Pittsburgh has, it's as good as what Washington has? It's just well, I think we can, yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we do have, obviously, that's a, a strength in, uh, in our positioning, and, you know, those players are, uh, are going to lead the way, and I know I'm going to try to do much of, uh, of the same, but, you know, that being said, you, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't care who your centermen are. You need guys on each wing and guys on the blue line to be pushing the puck up towards uh, those guys' direction and, and uh, you know, collectively be able to put it together to be able to be a successful team. So uh, that's what we're looking for. It was such a mismatch to watch Nashville, which didn't have much up the middle. A great defense, but not much up the middle. And same with Vegas, they didn't have a comparable middle yeah. to, to uh, I mean, I mean, no, no. Uh, you know, that being said, I think you know that is an important position. You got to rely on those guys specifically, um, just because you're all over the ice. It's you know you're relied upon so much in the offensive, defensive zone, neutral zone. You win in face off, so uh, you know it's definitely. Uh, important, but like I said, I mean, without guys on the wings, the, to be able to support those guys and uh, and help out, that I don't think it means much. Jesus. <laughs> Austin was saying that he wanted to get more assists this year than than goals. A lot of the best centers in the league have more assists than goals. Why is it important to be a distributor of the puck at center rather than? Uh, and rather than sacrificing and not shooting more. Well, I feel like in that particular position, you're, you're meant to, you know, yeah. distribute and, and make your line mates better and, and try to emphasize really on, on, on making them better and putting the puck in the right positions and everything kind of filters through the middle of the ice and, and, and where you play. So, um, you know, I respect that. I, I don't, I mean, he scores a lot of goals, so I'm not quite sure how he's going to do that, but he's a great passer as well. So, I mean, you got to have guys to, to be able to finish on each wing. So... Um, you know, our, our forward group is certainly, uh, you know, one to, to, um, to look up to. And it's probably about not being predictable too, right? Everybody's expecting uh, Austin to shoot all the time. Maybe if he dishes off a little bit, uh, he'll be less uh, predictable. Yeah, I, I mean, he's got the skill set. I think that'll create some, uh, some more space for him. And, and, you know, the end result could be, could end up being scoring more goals. So, you know, for him to distribute the puck and, and move the puck, which he's already great at, um, you know, it might uh, catch guys in between. It might free up some space, and then he could, uh, you know, put a few past the goalie. Club's dynamic on the power play. Does it change all that much with JVR gone? I mean, he had 11 goals. You had 12 in that regard. But with JT here, uh, do things look different in any way? Uh, yeah, a little bit. There's going to be a different dynamic. Uh, same structure, though. We have, uh, you know, I think that's... You know, that's what you try to do on the power play is just, you know, outnumber the opposition because you have one extra guy. So that's that's our mentality, and that's how you're going to score goals. But, you know, there's no no doubt about it that JVR was an important piece to that power play, and he had, you know, some of the best hands in tight that, uh, you know, I've ever seen. But, um, you know, we have guys, I think, that can step up, step up and fill those roles, and, uh, you know, that's going to be a component that makes a successful team again. Sometimes you uh, won't see Eric Carlson, Eric Carlson as much now, obviously. I'm just wondering your thoughts of him leaving the conference heading to San Jose. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to watch as a, as a player, uh, you know, just because I know he's, you know, he had a connection with the city and, and with the team. He's been there for so long. He was the captain. So, you know, in sports, that's just the business aspect of it. You know, sometimes you got to go. So it's, uh, 
you know, just watching the press conference and, and you know, listening to him say his goodbyes, it's, uh, you know, it's emotional to see because, you know, he's obviously got an attachment to the city and, uh, you know, but that's just how it is. How about on the ice? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I've, I've definitely swallowed a few minuses from him before, so I, I'm not, uh, you know, that devastated that he's move, moving conferences, but like I said, that's all joking aside. I mean, for him to have to pick up and do that is, I'm sure, hard for him. Is that a great retirement? What was it like to go up against him? What stood out about his career? Oh, he's officially retiring? Yeah. Uh, yeah, unbelievable player. He was uh, he was so gifted and, and so tough to play. I thought he he had a couple more years left in him for sure, just based on how uh, how he was playing when when we played against him. But uh, you know, could be a future Hall of Famer. He's he's a great player. One I look up look up looked up to as a 200 foot player and just trying to kind of do it all over the ice. So he's been doing it for a lot of years, and you know I got uh, I respect him for that. Everyone was disappointed. In Seven last year, Jake what took it seemed pretty hard. What was your reaction when you kind of saw his statements? And from your sense, how is he in terms of getting over stuff like that? Well, it's accountability. I mean, that's it takes takes a lot of courage to be able to come forward and say, "Hey, I you know I sucked." So uh, you know, for him to for him to do that shows a lot of um, maturity and, and accountability. And you know, those are the guys I want on my team is guys to be able to say, "Hey, I wasn't good enough," or you know, just to be able to to um, you know, make that uh, make that felt. So you know, I respect that. He understands that. He's the type of guy to, you know, kind of shrug it off and, and move on. So uh, I think that's what he's done.